In the late 15th century, a little over 500 years ago, Spanish exploration ships arrived in these waters. Their discoveries would go on to drastically alter the course of modern history. An island paradise of gorgeous coastlines with crashing waves, white sand beaches, but most importantly, fresh water. Christopher Columbus is credited with discovering what is now Puerto Rico on his second voyage in 1493. On board that voyage was Juan Ponce de Leon, who would go on to become the first governor of what is now modern day San Juan. To protect this city, as well as the gateway to the Caribbean, a castle fortress was built Castillo San Felipe del Moro. Acquired by Americans in 1898, this gorgeous island is now open to any explorer who wishes to experience it. Just landed in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and we got our bags right away, so that's good. Now we're off to find our rental car and go check out this island. That's our hotel. We 
uh, <laughs> found an iguana and he went up the tree while we were eating breakfast. And now Jill is gonna try to feed him. What's up, buddy? Oh, you're beautiful. Yeah. Sorry, we don't have any more sticky bone. No more Cinnabon. I wouldn't call this a two-lane road, but I guess it is. Smile. Interesting stairs and ramp. I suppose maybe they use the ramp to move cannons. Would be my guess. That would be quite a bit of strength and ropes and men. But I'm sure they had enough. another area of the fort down here and it looks like it kind of extends out more it's a big ass cannon man just think that some metal used in the 15th to 16th century. That's history right there. I really love the uh, sentry box is the best. There's something about this narrow passageway and how petite the actual room is. And then you kind of get out here and the wall drops off and you have a tremendous view uh, like no other, but it also makes you feel vulnerable, makes you feel the size of the fort and the height above the water. So 
that was more walking than I was really interested in today. Now we're gonna go find some food and re-energize. This is the famous brick that was used as ballast in the ships. That was then turned into... Yeah, I'm walking in the middle of the road then. I didn't know that, so it's thick and tight. Are we in the middle of the road? <laughs> well, anyway, these are the roads. Those are the brick used as ballast in the ships that came over and they didn't know what to do with the bricks so they made them into a road and it's very beautiful and it's blue. Ta-da! It's kind of got a San Francisco look to it. So for lunch we have paella, which is a baked dish with rice. It seems to be a curry flavor. It is not spicy at all. In fact, we've learned that most Puerto Rican foods are not spicy. And then we have mussels, clams, shrimp, calamari, scallops, and lobster tail. Uh, and probably something else I'm forgetting, all seafood. And this is fries. This is a plantain that is smashed to a thin piece and then you dip it in their fancy sauce here. What do you think? Morning number two, we are day. headed out on our biggest adventure of the trip to Calabra, flying Hope out for there. for no interactions with sharks. No question about it, we are right to go to Culebra. It's awesome. Hey, hablamos de eso ahorita. So awesome. <laughs> hey, if if I start working here though, am I gonna have to learn Spanish? Yes. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Are you nervous? No. No.
is Jeep rental. Sweet. I think a purple Jeep is awesome. Sweet. Let's do this. Pretty exciting trying to fill up in Calabria. Ooh, wow. <laughs> now we got a little over half a tank. We'll see how far that gets us. Right, we are in Culebra in our Jeep rental and this town is fucking nuts. <laughs> We're just oh, trying shit. to get out of here and figure out how to get to Flamenco Beach. Is that where we're going? I don't know. I think we should start there. In Culebra, in our Jeep, holy shit. There's that is beautiful. I see flamenco. Pretty much from here to there with not another soul in sight. That's Culebra. It's just remarkable to me how natural it is here. No high rises, no golf courses, no houses, no nothing, no people, nothing, nothing at all. I'm liking it, that's for sure. on the beach. Basically, if you look at any decent adventurer's video of the Caribbean, they come to this point. <laughs> this thing is awesome. We are downtown, I don't know what town this is, whatever town is in Culebra. Culebra? Oh, is it Culebra? I don't think so. Maybe Dewey? I don't know. And kind of getting hungry. So we're headed to Zacos Tacos to get some tacos. Maybe some fish tacos. And uh, I was messaging with uh, Ruby Rose sailing crew. I don't know if it was Nick or Teresa, but uh, I was messaging with them recently and they said definitely if you're on Culebra, go to Zacos Tacos. We actually re watched their episode and it looked like a good time, so we are going to follow in their footsteps. Thanks guys for the tip. Pork belly, fried fish. Um, seared tuna more pork shredded that is what beef and also fish first impressions amazing <laughs> i'm going with the the tuna hands down we gotta be getting close because we're running out of land
it's like push hour in Atlanta. Everybody's getting out of town. Someone had told us, don't waste money flying, take the fast ferry. Well, there's the fast ferry, and it doesn't look so fast to me. We didn't mind spending a little more on the flight. We're aviation enthusiasts. That's part of the experience. Besides, we had a blast on that flight. And just like that, are back on the mainland. Wow. Look at that. Nice morning. Uh, this morning we are basically just going to hang out here at the uh, hotel. And then we're going to go have some good authentic lunch. And then we're going to uh, hit the rainforest, which we're really excited about. Uh, the rainforest here is called El Yunque. It's the only rainforest in U.S. territory, and uh, it's literally five minutes from where we're staying. So we're gonna go check that out later this afternoon. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, look at that tree right there. It's the road to the rainforest. goes you do this you just point your car whichever direction you want to go and you go there it's like the wild west out here but you just gotta oh squeeze it all in ah. <laughs> all right we're getting close I'm starting to see the tips of the support systems at the observatory. I believe it's the largest radio telescope in the world. And I'm pretty excited to check this out. I love stuff like this.
This is Arecibo. Once the largest and now second largest radio telescope in the world. With a mass of 90 tons, this platform is suspended over the thousand foot diameter reflector. The telescope was built in the early 1960s in the Karst Mountain region of Puerto Rico. This location was chosen due to its terrain features, proximity to the equator, and being on American controlled soil. Kevin. Kevin. Right. Cool. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. There's a lot of Kevins from Minnesota. Oh, I've never come across here before. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Thanks. It's a nice way to do it because then you get some air. Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> right here today is very hot. It is. Yeah. Uh, right here you can see the anchors. The anchors were, were, were built with the towers from 1960 to 1963. And the roads around here are just insane. Basically, we believe that we shouldn't stop any experiment because uh, we need some piece or some piece uh, or parts of the radio telescope gets broke during an experiment. And as you can see, uh, we are far away from the city. Yeah. yeah. So if we need to stop an experiment because one piece gets broke, uh, it will, we, 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 we are going to have a delay of hours. Now, this is a skeleton. This was the, the demo that engineers used to see how they were going to pull up the Gregorian Dome, how the Gregorian Dome was going to look in the platform, and how it was going to move. Oh, cool. Now, this so, one is a smaller one, very small one in compar comparison with the actual Gregorian Dome. The actual Gregorian Dome has a height of a building of four floors and is divided in three floors inside of it. Wow. That's cool to see that. Yeah. Now, this right here is the HF building. It's called HF of uh, high frequency. We have six generators, and those six generators power up six high frequency antennas that we have in the bottom of the, of the reflector that we use to see the ionosphere. Gosh, that's a really cool view with the lighting. Yeah, it is. Want me to stop? No, you're good. It's just great, great lighting right here. Yeah, it's so cool. So this is the reflector, guys. Wow. It's huge. Yeah, when you're up there, you don't really <laughs> recognize how huge it really is. That's right. Uh, really nice and clean and well kept down here. Do you see those uh, round pieces right Are there? Are those the pieces of the antenna that fell? That's right. Wow. So Kevin said that these are the pieces of the antenna that fell during Hurricane Maria. They were attached right up here and they <laughs> fell down and took out a bunch of panels and bent up a bunch of stuff. So now they're trying to decide if they're going to fix these or if they're going to just order new ones. That's so cool. Wow. There it is. That's right. Uh, as you can see, they are uh, they are not as strong as seams, so they've been. Yeah. That's why. Uh, Touch the telescope. I, I just love, I love seeing like how it's all on a cable system. I mean, I honestly, looking at pictures of it, thought initially that it might be concrete. I didn't realize that it was, it was like an aluminum trampoline. Don't bust it. 
that, but it's flexible. It has to be. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then the light gets through, so you've got the vegetation underneath. So is That's it, right. what, 15 feet below it? Yes. That's so cool in there. So, right wow. here, the reflector has a diameter of about 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet across. It has across. a of 167 feet. And it is built with 38,778 aluminum perforated pounds. <laughs> it's got a very Jurassic Park feel here to it. Now, GoldenEye was filmed right here, and Contact was, was well, filmed that's right what here. To, okay. With, uh, I want to watch that. Uh, Helen Hunt? Or Jodie Foster? Jodie Foster. Yeah. So she was like on the outskirts of it looking at it? That's right. Contact uh, okay. and GoldenEye. So do a lot of people that work here, this is a random question, just because our drive here was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Like it's a trek getting through all those little roads and up and down and you're way back in here. Do a lot of people that like work here on a day to day live in the area? Do people ever stay here? Do you have like quarters that people stay in or anything? We can stay here. We have cabins. We have some rooms. Uh, we have the VHQs. Uh, those are rooms that we can use. We can stay. Uh, whenever we want, whenever we need. Oh, okay. You can see right here, there, underneath of the. Oh yeah, that's cool. This oh, that is cool. Underneath it. I can take take you there, but you can see from here. That's okay. It's pretty neat. But yeah, uh, even the scientists can stay in the cabins and everything. We have scientists that run their experiment for one to seven months. I bet, yeah. So they can stay here, they can bring their their families and oh, stay. Cool. Oh, that's neat, so their family's here with them. Yeah, we Man, have a, a pool, we have a basketball court. Really? Yes. Damn. Do you have a room for tonight? <laughs> huh? You're going to have to drive back to East <laughs> Do you have a room for tonight? <laughs> right here you can see the hanging uh, cable car. Oh, that's we cool. We use the cable car, so... Oh, yeah. We use a cable car, so it's one of the access to the platform. Yeah. The cable car on the hanging bridge. Man, that's neat. So are they trained as like engineers, specific? Maintenance personnel, engineers, and all that kind of okay. personnel. Yeah. Electricians. Uh, Electricians, sure, okay. Yeah. Right here, this is the control room. That's the oh, control that's room the there. Control room. That's okay. right. Okay. Wow. So is this financed through Florida State or Central Florida or whatever it was? And right now we are under the administration of Young Enterprise, uh, UFC, the okay, Central yeah. University of Florida, Florida, and the UMED from Puerto Rico. Okay. This building we have here is a fourth floor building. We have a library, we have a mail center, and we have scientist offices and the director of the observatory. It's kind of like an admin building. Yeah. Now, right here, behind this gazebo, yep. they are, those are like four rooms that we have right there. Oh. Those are the easiest one. Okay. Uh, now, up to this hill, we have cabins that scientists can stay. That's so cool. So they those stay like up cabins. in the hills. Yeah, yeah. Those are woods cabins. Yeah. They are pretty good and pretty um, clean and beautiful. Nice. And we have the BISQs. Those are all like rooms that actually it's like a hotel for employees and all that and they are pretty, pretty cool too. Now oh. right here we have the basketball court and we have the pool. Nice. I and think like, we are just blown away by the friendliness of everyone in Puerto Rico. Thank you guys. Yeah. I really yeah. appreciate that. Hey man, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, sir. Yeah.